1120 Talk 1340 News Money Sports. Ryan Hyatt's Raider Land till noon. I'm Ryan Hyatt. Tim Siegel hanging out with us today, and we got a lot to look at before we uh, hit the bottom of the hour break. So you guys chime in on the text line. Some folks already have 806 855 3712 in the Hubbleplex 770 uh, Red Raider men's basketball, Tim. We've been around, we've seen a lot of environments in that building and even before at the Coliseum. And it just still strikes me that it has become a happening, a consistent happening out there. I'm not, I'm not going to say that I, I never expected to see that, but to see the consistency now of the students and everything else and big money sh uh, rolling in, this is the big time now. This is where ESPN wants to be. I just love this scene. That's all everybody's talking about now when you see the, the, fan, the, the students back and forth and the bla all black and the white. You know, this is what I remember at times earlier with whether it was Coach Dickey or Coach Knight or, you know, and I've seen it all, even when I was at Arkansas when oh, we had yeah. Eddie Sutton, and I always used to rave about Barnhill Arena with the fans going crazy, but that's what we have here now with many more fans. How, what, what's the spillover effect to every other program? Because, you know, you, you bring in tennis players and basketball players during football season sometimes, football players come in during basketball. How much does that help an overall department? from a other team's recruiting standpoint to be able to say, see the kind of frenzied atmosphere we have here, not just for what we do, but overall. When I recruited, I always talked about the other sports, how great we are and how much school spirit we have. And when there were 7,000 in the stadium, it was hard to generate that buzz. Yeah. And when I, at the Kansas game, I'm in the tunnel there with Luke, and I'm seeing all the football players walk in. And, and it, it changes everything. All of us want to bring in our recruits at a big football game, but now a big basketball game, and that's, it, you cannot put a price tag on how much that helps recruiting. You know, the, the athletic department had a, a culture about it there in the mid-90s uh, with you and Coach Sharp, Spike, you know, in the year 94, 95, and Larry Hayes, and everybody's winning, and, and everything was growing, and I felt that that communal culture had kind of gone away, and, and I had wondered, you know, the arena gets built, football gets its own facility, baseball coaches over here. You guys were all in the same hallway, seeing each other every day. How, how much of that do you think they're getting back now with Kirby Hocutt and how he's kind of structured this department? Well, you're exactly right. I remember walking into the office and, and taking me 20 minutes to get to my office because all I would do is talk to each coach on <laughs> right. the way. We are spread out, but a lot, of, a lot of athletic departments are even much more spread out. But, but the coaches... Are, it's, a, it's a fraternity, and, and they all want to help and support each other, and there's no question that you now see coaches at these events. And I remember, I remember telling my team, we're going to other teams to watch and to support them, and we'll get the same support back. But it's very easy now when you go into the arena and you can't even get a seat. Text line open for you, 806-855-3712. We asked the question today, two great basketball teams in, in, a, in a world gone mad. If we could pit last year's basketball team at Tech against this year's, what would your point spread be? Uh, one of the first ones we got off the uh, text line was uh, last year. And it, it said 7.5 last year. Now, I don't know if that means they get 7.5 or they're uh, uh, laying 7.5. And then uh, another texter uh, also asking, hey, how did Luke uh, enjoy that win last night? He loves every win. He sure does. He loves I, sports. I'll tell you this. When I talk to Luke about a game, do you think we're going to win? And that tongue comes moving fast. He understands. Oh, yeah. And when the game is over, Luke, we just beat Texas, and we're going to win the conference. That tongue is moving. So I, I assure you, and thank you for the text, he understands. Yep. Now you just got to figure out a way. Luke needs to go to some NCAA tournament games this year. I listen, might sneak around a little we've bit. We've already talked about it, including my 16-year-old daughter, who uh, is looking forward to that as well. Yeah, and, and she had a great run as well with uh, their basketball team this year. She did. Fourth round, Lubbock Cooper Pirates, the playoffs, and, and very exciting for her, and she's – she is, uh, has gone from basketball right now to club volleyball, so it doesn't stop for her. It never stops. It is absolutely year-round. All right, so let's, let's talk about this f fantasy matchup. I, I love things like this because there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. And when we, if we started comparing these two teams, like if they were going to play each other, let's start off with Jared Culver. Jared Culver this year, Jared Culver last year. Seems to me a more complete player, different role, obviously. But in a head-to-head -head matchup against each other, I, I like this year's Jared Culver a couple of points better. He's going to drive the basket more. At times, wasn't shooting particularly well, but he believes he's the man, so therefore, absolutely, 2019 Jared Culver. Yeah, uh, let's go to the post. You had to, you were hobbled last year with Zach Smith. He does come back late and give you stuff, and obviously, he's a very talented player. 
This year you've had Tariq Owens step in, another experienced player. He's been healthy. And the expanded role of Norris Odiasi. Am I crazier to say it's at, at worst a push, slight edge maybe, if you look at a guy who just set a, a Texas Tech blocks record, Tariq Owens on the defensive side? I would actually say 19 is almost clearly the better because of Owens, because of yeah. that defensive presence, and because Odiase is, is that much stronger this year than last year. Boy, Odiase, the last two weeks, three weeks, the, the mental toughness going through that tragedy with his family, the emotional leader, and then just going out and playing well, he has finished better around the rim than I thought he would at any time this year. And if you're going from 5-point Odiase to 8-10-point to 10 point Odiase in NCAA play, that's massive. Uh, we'll get to the X Factors in a second, folks. I know who you guys are and what we're going to talk about. Davide Moretti last year, Davide Moretti this year, no comparison. Moretti, the fact that you know, you've got Fran Fischella talking about him as one of the unsung players in the country that watch out for him in the tournament. Someone said something last night, has he missed a three this season? <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. And since January, he's over 50% on threes, and I don't know that he's missed a free throw maybe in, in the last two months. All right, check 19. Uh, where do we want to match up Mooney? Because we got two X factors here. One, one, one is Zaire Smith. You cannot account for him. There's nobody like that. So what he would bring for last year's team against this year's team in that defense would be fascinating. But last year's team didn't have a Mooney out there on the perimeter, a big guy, strong guy, experience who could handle it. I'm not going to say push. I'm going to lean athleticism a little bit on Zaire Smith. Well, I think you have to because of scoring overall and and. The fact that the defense this year is better still can't account for how great Zaire is. How do we value a team having a Keenan Evans? And no offense to this year's team, and, and certainly not Culver. You can't expect somebody to just become a senior, play through an injury like Evans. One more X factor that I think allows this thing to stay close and competitive, Keenan Evans. When you have that X factor, when you know that it's your team, even though he was injured for a certain amount of time, just his presence, I think that's, 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 that says a lot. I would love to see this game. Would it not be fun? Uh, Robert Snyder, the uh, un unheard uh, contributor to the show today, also made the great point this year's team has something last year's team didn't, and that's the experience of being through it, of, of handling that. And that's something you can't give them as a coach. They've got to have it. I've been through where our team made the Sweet 16, and they may, were, they may have felt, hey, we accomplished something. Yeah. So this year's team, the, the – Elite eight is not good enough, and that's it's not just the experience of being there, it's that we expect more and we feel like we are a team that can go all the way. So, for that reason, I'm gonna lean towards 19. All right, I'm, I'm 19 minus two and a half, and I would not want to lay that two and a half in this game if we ever played it. But if I got to establish it, that's what I would go with. You guys can get it on the text line, that's our text line question of the day here on Ryan Hyatt's Raiderland 806 855. 3712-806-855-3712. Got just a couple of uh, seconds here before we get out of here to the bottom of the hour break. Coach Siegel, uh, one more. Anything else they need to know? How do they get involved? We've got the website. What do we need to do? Team Luke, hopeforminds.org. And if you want to follow Luke's progress, you can do that on Facebook at Pray for Luke Siegel. Absolutely. Coach, thanks for hanging out with us today. My pleasure.